My name is Senator Joanne C. Benson. I am the sponsor of Senate Joint Resolution Number 5. On behalf of every citizen who deeply cares about children, families, all people, regardless of race, creed, color, national or, or, or nationality, gender, where they live or where they are going, it makes no difference. We are here today to convey to our congressional delegation our unwavering support for an immediate ceasefire in Israel and occupied Palestine. Palestine. We ask for the release of all hostages and give aid to Palestine people. 65% of the people here in America are lending their voices to this. Violence of any kind, war of any kind, is devastating and unacceptable, wherever it is. As a civil rights warrior, violence has never worked and it never will. Since October of 2023, over 24,000 lives of Palestinians and Israelis have been taken or wounded. This also includes Americans. Homes have been destroyed. Homes have been damaged. The hope for over 10,000 children is gone. These children didn't ask to be, be born with this expectation. Our resolution is a clarion call for peace, for justice, and humanitarian relief for the children and families in Gaza. Let me be clear, we are not here to pass judgment we are here to say to our President Biden and to the United States government that they have the power to save the lives of Palestinians and Israeli people. Thousands of people, including our citizens in Maryland, have joined in a peaceful protest to amplify this call across the United States and here in Maryland, there has been an, a significant increase, a significant increase in bigotry and attacks on our synagogues, our mosques, our schools, our homes, our churches, our offices, at rallies and gathering places. We cannot afford to wait another day. We must stop the spread of anti-Semitism, anti-Palestinian, Arab attacks, which are triggered by the violence which prevails in the Holy Land. We strongly, without fail, condemn, condemn violations of internal national law and any attack set forth which brings hurt and harm to the people. And we are conveying to Maryland congressional delegation our support for an immediate long-term ceasefire in Israel and occupied Palestine. The return of all hostages and aid to the Palestinian people we want all people, regardless as to who they are, to live, work, learn, play, pray without threats of intimidation or death. We would request that this critical resolution be delivered to our governor, Wes Moore, to the Honorable William C. Ferguson IV, who is the president of the Maryland Senate of the Maryland Senate, to the Honorable Adrian Jones, Speaker of the House of Delegates, all Honorable
honorable delegates, all honorable senators of the great state of Maryland who are part of the Maryland General Assembly and the Maryland Congressional Delegation. We are adamant, we are not going to stop until this senseless war, it's a war, it's an act of violence, is brought to a screeching halt. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, Senator Benson. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you to uh, all of our coalition members who are here this morning uh, in support of House Joint Resolution 2 and Senate Joint Resolution 5. Uh, for the record, I'm Delegate Gabriel Acevedo, and I represent uh, District 39 in Montgomery County, a district that's one of the most diverse districts uh, in our state, but also home to one of the largest Muslim and Arab and immigrant communities in our state, uh, which I'm proud to represent. And I'm equally as proud to stand here today with Senator Benson, who is the Senate sponsor of the ceasefire resolution in Israel and occupied Palestine, as well as my colleague in the House, uh, Delegate Kaylin Young, who will be speaking after me. I uh, want to thank everyone who has made up our coalition uh, to ensure that we're pushing for uh, this resolution and its passage so that we're sending a very clear message where our values are and what we would like to see our government do. Before I provide remarks, I just wanted to share a couple, um, a couple of just really tragic uh, statistics. First being that uh, last year, 75% of journalists killed were in Gaza. And when we talk about coverage of this war, of this conflict and what's taking place, it is the brave journalists who quite frankly have provided us with what's taking place on the ground and the realities of Palestinians. And so before I begin my remarks, I wanted to ensure that we're acknowledging uh, that there have been a lot of journalists that have died last year and have died this year in covering this uh, very violent conflict uh, that is having not just a disproportionate impact on Palestinian America, um, Palestinians, um, but also uh, it is impacting the freedom of press uh, and uh, the, 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 freedom, the freedom of journalists to be able to report on, um, on what's taking place in our world. Uh, the humanitarian crisis in Gaza is a travesty of humanity. It is a crisis, mm -hmm. uh, and it is one that we simply cannot ignore. Like so many across my district, across our country and this world, uh, we are deeply troubled, uh, deeply concerned, by the images that we are seeing coming out of Gaza, out of Rafa, uh, and the images that we're seeing coming out of the West Bank. And I know that this morning, uh, the focus is on uh, ending uh, the conflict and a ceasefire in Gaza, uh, but I wanted to point out that there are atrocities that are being committed, not just in Gaza, but in the West Bank as well, that is deserving not just of our attention, uh, but uh, the world's attention as well. Over the past few months, we've seen hospitals, schools, and refugee camps targeted with no regard for human life. Mm. We have seen the building of illegal settlements in the West Bank, uh, and we've seen food, water, and medical assistance be used as a weapon of war against a civilian population. We are here today, not just out of concern, but because we recognize that our government, the United States, plays an integral role in not just bringing this conflict to an end, but ensuring long-lasting peace. And the way to achieve that is through a diplomatic and political solution and not a military one. Additionally, it's a recognition that Palestine exists, Palestinians exist, and they have the right to exist in their homeland and the right to self-determination, and the right to live safely alongside Israelis in this region. And so we firmly believe in a two-state solution, but we recognize that there are forces that are against a two-state solution and instead are working to jeopardize that. We are concerned by the genocidal language that has been used 
by this Israeli government, cabinet ministers, as well as members of the Knesset that belong to Prime Minister Netanyahu's political party. We are concerned by the mounting civilian death toll and the psychological trauma on survivors and children. Mm. We cannot stand by while innocent civilians and children continue to be indiscriminately bombed and deprived of basic needs such as food, water, sanitation, and medical assistance. We are complicit as a country if we fail to hold Netanyahu's government accountable, if we fail to use our power to bring about long-lasting peace where Israel and Palestine can exist, and we are complicit if we do not call out the double standard and what has been happening with our tax dollars as well as the, 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 the millions in, in, in military supplies that we've provided to Israel thus far. We need a permanent ceasefire. We don't need a temporary ceasefire. We do not need a humanitarian pause. We do not need a ceasefire for six weeks. We need a permanent ceasefire now. Further, we need an unimpeded entry of humanitarian aid into Gaza. We call for the release of all Israeli hostages, and we also call for the release of all Palestinian detainees who are held in Israeli jails without charge or trial under administrative detention, a majority of whom are young people, young people who have not been charged or convicted of anything but continue to languish in Israeli jails. As we call for the release of Israeli hostages, we must also call for the release of Palestinian detainees, not prisoners, detainees that are being held in Israeli jails and prisons. Further, we are calling on our government, the United States, to end the obstruction of Palestinian protections against genocide under international law. Our government is not being an honest arbiter if it continues to side with a right-wing apartheid regime that is intent on not just starving but displacing Palestinians from their homeland. We cannot be true brokers of peace if we continue to take the side of those who do not respect life, who do not abide by international law, and who are unwilling to take the very directives that are coming from our own government considering that our tax dollars are funding these atrocities. So I ask my colleagues today, I ask our leadership in this country, how many more innocent Palestinians must die as a result of Netanyahu's prosecution of this war? How many more Palestinian Americans, how many more Jewish Americans who are currently living in fear right now because of this situation that is unraveling uh, in the Middle East how many more folks must experience Islamophobia and anti-Semitism before we bring about true lasting peace, before we hold this Zionist government accountable and recognize that it is not a representation of Judaism and that we who believe in peace, we who respect human life, would like to see not just an end to this conflict, but a free Palestine, one that exists alongside Israel, that is safe. As a proud AME Christian, I understand the significance of this region and the Holy Land. It has significance for all of us who subscribe to Abrahamic religions, our Muslim, our Jewish, and our Christian sisters and brothers and family. And to have watched the birthplace of Jesus be bombed over the holidays, to see the, the disregard for human life. It should shock anyone regardless of your, your religious affiliation or spiritual belief. And so I stand here today, not just as a proud AME Christian, alongside my Jewish sisters and brothers, my Muslim sisters and brothers, my colleagues in the General Assembly to call for a ceasefire in Israel and occupied Palestine, to call for an end to this conflict, to call for unimpeded entry of humanitarian aid, to call for the release of all Palestinian detainees, to call for an end to the building of illegal settlements, and to call for an end to this illegal occupation. And so I wanna thank my colleague in the Senate, Senator Joanne Benson, for her moral courage and for 
not just introducing the Senate Joint Resolution, but for standing up and standing on the right side of history as she has so often done. I wanna thank all of those who are in our coalition as well as my colleague in the House, Delegate Kalen Young, for his courage and for joining us. And I want to say that this has gone beyond what is considered self-defense. This is collective punishment. Mm. And it will not get us closer to peace mm. or a two-state solution. Mm. History will judge us all and it will not be kind to any of us or reserved in its judgment when the final death toll in Palestine has been reported and the direct and indirect impacts of this conflict have been felt. I'm calling for my colleagues in the General Assembly to pass House Joint Resolution 2 and let us show not just our constituents, but the rest of this country and this world that we can lead on this issue and we will not stand by as atrocities are being committed and we will continue to stand with our Jewish sisters and brothers who are against this apartheid regime and we'll continue to stand with our Muslim and Arab and Palestinian uh, constituents and community in calling for an end to the occupation. Thank you all so very For 150 days and 75 years, the world has witnessed unspeakable atrocities and war crimes in Gaza, funded by billions of our taxpayer dollars. Both the United Nations Highest Court, the International Court of Justice, and the U.S. District Court judge have declared the plausibility of genocide in this decades-long besieged strip of land. When House Speaker Adrian Jones earlier this session announced the decency agenda, it was very welcome news. Decency requires that we acknowledge the sanctity of human life. It demands that we embody moral courage, use our platforms for those who are oppressed and stand for justice for them and for ourselves, against ourselves as well. Ceasefire is a local issue impacting thousands of your constituents, including many whose loved ones have been killed by Israeli forces in recent weeks. The urgency of this moment cannot be overstated. A ceasefire yesterday would have protected hundreds of innocent lives today. A ceasefire today would protect hundreds of innocent lives predominantly children and women tomorrow. Subjecting Gaza's entire population to relentless sadistic violence and suffering is unconscionable, immoral, and inhumane. We can't unsee the horrors we've witnessed. Collective punishment should never be acceptable. We would never fathom bombing a school full of children to take out a school shooter. And the fact is that the only time hostages have been safely released has been during a ceasefire. Nearly 70% of Americans support the U.S. calling for a permanent ceasefire. Howard and Anne Arundel counties have recently joined at least 66 members of Congress, including Representatives Jamie Raskin, Kwaisi Mfume, and David Trone, dozens of U.S. cities and counties in calling for a ceasefire to end the violence and bloodshed. The state of Maryland has an opportunity this session, this session to be a global beacon of compassion, morality, and courage. This assembly rightfully unanimously passed a resolution supporting Ukraine. This re ceasefire resolution similarly acknowledges to Congress and the Biden administration of the urgent need to halt the horrific violence, to promote humanitarian efforts, and to pave the way for meaningful negotiations towards a just and lasting solution. History will judge us. Yeah. Future generations will judge us based on where we stood in this staggering crisis. Protecting innocent lives should never be a controversial issue. Supporting House Joint Resolution 2, Senate Joint Resolution 5, is supporting humanity, dignity, peace, and freedom. Wonderful speech and for making all those salient points. Also, thank you to Senator Benson for your leadership in the Senate. We know that there are less of you in the Senate, and by virtue, it's more difficult to garner that type of support. And so we just thank you for standing on your own two feet for being a woman of conscience and for being somebody that I can look up to as I begin my professional and political career, making sure that we hold ourselves accountable to justice. And that is really where my question is, is where is the justice? But more importantly and more critically, in Maryland, where is the Black Caucus? I raise that question because Dr. King once said, as we all know, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Absolutely. We know that there's injustice in the Middle East. 
We know that there's injustice in the Sudan, in the Congo, in Haiti, right now. But our caucus has been silent. The time for us to be silent is over. Yeah. Yesterday we saw our vice president call for an immediate ceasefire with conditions. But let us be happy and appreciative of the progress that we're making. Our vice president called for a ceasefire. That should be ringing on every phone in the Black Caucus right now. And I asked the Black Caucus today, the highest ranking African-American official in the country is calling for a ceasefire. What are we waiting on? I asked our governor, when are we going to go in a different direction? When are we going to fight for justice? What is the point of having all this black leadership in Maryland and we don't do nothing about it? Wow. Hmm. Wow. What's the point of having the largest black caucus in the history of the country, in the richest state, in the richest country, in the history of the world, if we aren't gonna do anything about injustice in this world. The time for silence is over. Enough children are dying in tents. They're in tents and bombs are falling on tents. And we still need to explain this. So today's about accountability for my colleagues. Are we gonna stand up for justice? Or we want to remain silent when we see injustice. What does that look like for our children in Baltimore City, where I represent, and we seek to build a better future for them, but we can't have compassion for other people's children, other black and brown children who are just on the other side of the Suez Canal from Africa? Where is the Black Caucus? Thank you. I'd like to call Reverend Thomas Payne from Memorial AME Church in Baltimore. Good, um, good morning. I'm Reverend Melick Thomas, uh, Pastor Payne Memorial AME Church in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, and uh, just to add to the, the concert of voices that is uh, boldly and, and courageously called for a ceasefire in Palestine, I'd like to add uh, just one slight reflection from Jeremiah 31, 15. Thus says the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more. What we have seen, not just since October 7th, because as history will show us, it did not start on October 7th, 2023. Rachel is weeping. Rachel is weeping when over 14,000 children in the Palestinian uh, territory have been murdered by weapons supplied by a country that calls itself the land of the free and the home of the brave. Rachel is weeping for his children when children are starving to death at the border of Palestine and Egypt while some pastors use food as props and sermons. Rachel is weeping when it becomes more important for the Democratic Party to be focused on donations and polls for the election in the fall, but not care about the ethnic cleansing of Palestinian people. Mm. Rachel is weeping when we have money for bombs in the West Bank, but not money for books in the schools in West Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Rachel is weeping. Oh and I'm sorry to say that no matter how much we trumpet the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Emancipation Proclamation, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, no matter how much we have black presidents and, and diverse folk in all forms of government, Rachel is weeping and we are cause of her tears. And until our elected officials have the backbone and the courage just like these elected officials who have joined us on this dais, to call not just for a ceasefire and not just for humanitarian aid, but for a full investigation into all of the war crimes that have been committed over the last few months. There has to be a time for us to recognize that we are causing Rachel to cry. 
And it's time for us, not just as a church, not just as a nation, but as a world, to recognize that what's going on in Palestine is one of the greatest moral and ethical issues of our time. And my question to this country, and even more specifically, my, country, my question to the state in which I was born and raised, live, and now work, which side of history will we be on? Because the same way that in Nazi Germany, there were some people who thought they were going to be on the right side of history because they were aligned with power. 80 years later, we now have the full scope of what happened in Europe in the 1930s and 1940s. So my question to the Maryland General Assembly, which side of history will you be on? Will you be on the side of history that makes your pockets fat just for the moment? Or will you be on the side of history that says, I am going to work until Rachel no longer has to cry, until children in the West Bank matter just as much as children in Howard County, until children in Gaza matter just as much as children in Timonia, until children in Lebanon and Congo matter just as much as the children that we, uh, that we sing about and we talk about in our education system. We have an obligation, a moral obligation, an ethical ob obligation to call for an immediate permanent ceasefire, a diplomatic journey towards a two-party, a two-state system, and for the full investigation of all war crimes that are being committed against Palestinians, against those who are over there that, uh, that are, are being, uh, that are being intentionally starved, the, uh, the hospitals are being bombed, the children that are being targeted by weapons that we provide. My question to America, to the state of Maryland, to Governor Westmore, and to all those who represent us, who we, who we vote for and who we will be voting for in November. Mm -hmm. What side of history will be on? Will you be on? Because, of course, we may not have the money that some lobby groups might have. Hmm. But while our money might be short, our memory is long. Thank you. Watch out. Yeah. Watch out. The, the podium, the dais, Mahmoud. Mahmoud Abuel Roos and Layla. We'll start with Mahmoud. Good morning. Thank you, Delegate Acevaro and the leaders who have stood up for justice and are introducing today House Resolution 2 and also House Resolution 8. I'm here today to speak to you as a witness to the tragedy that began not in October 2023, but in 1948, 76 years ago when Israeli soldiers came to the home of my grandparents and forced them out of their land in Al-Lid, which is present day Tel Aviv, to Gaza, where my father was born as a refugee. 76 years ago, on December 12, 2023, I received a breaking news alert. 17 members of the Abarus family are killed in an Israeli strike in the Nusayrat refugee camp in central Gaza. These were fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, and they left orphans. What was their crime? My fellow Americans, the ethnic cleansing and forceful displacement of Palestinians that we saw in 1948, AKA the Nakba, the catastrophe, right. we are witnessing again. The same scenes of tents being set up in 1948, we're seeing them again in Gaza today. So, hmm. 76 years ago, we witnessed apartheid in South Africa. And we are witnessing again apartheid in present day Palestine. Right. My fellow Americans, I'm a witness to apartheid. I joined my fellow brothers and sisters in Christianity to visit the occupied lands. And I toured Bethlehem. I toured refugee camps. I saw the apartheid wall. I heard from Palestinians themselves who, were, who told me that they are second-class citizens in their own country. Today, I saw a video of a father in Northern Gaza looking through the trash and he found treasure, rotten potatoes to feed his starving children. If death doesn't reach these children through snipers and bombs from Israel, they reach them through starvation and disease. 
As I was walking here to the, to the Senate building, I saw a mural of Dr. Martin Luther King. I ask you, fellow Americans, what would Dr. King say today mm. when he witnesses civil rights, human rights being trampled on? What would Nelson Mandela say today if he were to witness apartheid in Palestine? Mm. What would Jesus, Prophet Isa, say today to the innocent loss of lives and children dying from hunger? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What would Prophet Muhammad say if he were here, to hear, to hear today when he told us that injustice in this life will be injustice, will be darkness on the day of judgment? My, my. And God said in the Quran, whoever causes corruption on earth or kills a life, one life, it's as if he killed all of humanity. And whoever saves a life, it's as if he saved all of humanity. So my fellow delegates and my fellow Americans, which side of history do you want to stand on today? History will judge the position you took today. Are you going to save a life and stand with justice and end the genocide in Gaza? Or are you going to be silent? That's the question I'll leave with you today. Thank you. This time, uh, we'd like to invite uh, our representative from Jewish Voices, please, Shelley. I'm Shelley Cohen Fudge. I'm here as a representative of the DC Metro chapter of Jewish Voice for Peace along with several of our members from both DC Metro and also from our Baltimore chapter. Our members are among the many Jewish Marylanders who strive for a society in Palestine, Israel, that's rooted in equality rather than supremacy, dignity rather than dispossession, and domination, a society where every life is precious. I'd like to recite a very few statements by Gazan journalist Mahmoud Mustafa from an opinion piece in the Israeli news magazine Plus 972 published on February the 29th titled, These Words Are Penned in Hunger from Northern Gaza. I have little energy to go on. My life in Northern Gaza since October 7th has been one unending nightmare. Fear, anxiety, hunger, thirst, and cold have become my daily companions. I am unable to comprehend the gravity of our situation, nor come to terms with the losses. Nearly 150 days of brutal war have deprived me of everything. I had, literally, I've lost it all, not only my home and belongings, but also my identity my spirit, my mind, my dreams, my aspirations. I experience oppression and humiliation each moment that I have to wait my turn to get a small liter of water at an extortionist price. We are forced to eat animal feed if we can find even that. Mushtaha goes on to speak about his determination to stay in Gaza despite the risks he takes every day, every hour by staying there. No international reporters are allowed into Gaza. Thus, Mushtaha feels compelled to stay so he can shed light on the immense suffering of Gazans the heartbreaking cries of children to entreaty us to end the genocide. Over 70 cities 
and other local governments across the U.S. have passed ceasefire resolutions. 75 members of Congress have called for a ceasefire. And Kamala Harris just called for an immediate ceasefire, but only for a six week pause. It is the responsibility of every US elected official to speak out about the genocide taking place before our eyes. Some members of the Maryland General Assembly, whom we have met with over the past several weeks have told us that they truly fear speaking out on this issue. They fear being accused of anti-Semitism. They fear that they'll be primaried. They tell us this, while thousands of Gazans are suffering from lack of clean drinking water and famine is taking place. It's taking hold as we speak. No place in Gaza is safe now. They fear their own lives and the lives of their children. How many more Gazan children must die from bombs provided by our U.S. tax dollars? Yeah. How many more will soon die from starvation? Airdropping a penance of the amount of food needed to stave off the growing famine is far from adequate. Only the U.S. government has the power to force Israel to stop the genocide. The local chapters of Jewish Voice for Peace in Maryland want all members of the Maryland General Assembly to take the moral stand and tell the Biden administration to stop the unspeakable carnage taking place throughout Gaza by passing House Joint Resolution 2. At this time, I'll call Imam Haji Sal from Montgomery County. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. We praise to uh, God Allah uh, for making us part of this gathering. Um, whenever we were ready to talk about our Honorable Senator already went through it, Delegate Asheville went through it. My brother here went through it, the delegate. So I have to just find what to say. You said it all. Uh, we cannot be just here watching when injustice is rolling. What's going on in Israel and Gaza and Palestine in general is just unimaginable. Us coming here to this place it reminds me what South Africa did. When South Africa, the only country who went and courageously took Israel to the world court and condemned them for the genocide. Yes, what we went through, not only in America, all over the world as blacks. We shouldn't let any injustice, regardless where you came from, and be silent. My religion, Islam, teaches me to go for injustice. Whatever you see injustice, take it out of your hand. If we cannot speak about it, if we cannot make sure it hurts you. It's been hurting us. We never had a chance to really speak up. You gave us a chance. What we're asking is just like we mentioned, a ceasefire without a condition. Enough lives been gone already. Over 30,000 people died. People, many of them children, deliberately killing. At this time, we'll have Father Ty Hollinger, the pastor of Transfiguration <clears throat> Catholic Church. Um, I would just add the voice of Christians in Maryland, uh, being in solidarity uh, with people of all faith to call for this immediate permanent ceasefire now. I can remember being with advocates back in November and December praying and urging our government to act to pressure for an immediate ceasefire before Thanksgiving 
before Christmas. It's been before New Year's. Now we're in, for us Christians, we're in Lent. Ramadan begins very soon. This ceasefire should have already happened five months ago. That it continues to not happen means more Gazans, more Palestinians are being slaughtered every day. Now they're facing the even more painful slaughter of starvation, of lack of medical care, the complete destruction of everything that makes society civil from universities and schools to hospitals and ambulances to places of worship, mosques, churches. Even the roads have become impassable for the relief agencies who are trying to bring food, especially to people that are still in the north of Gaza. There is one Catholic church in Gaza, the Church of the Holy Family. Over 600 people have been sheltering there since the beginning of the bombing of Gaza. And they've been without food now for weeks. No food. And relief trucks that they were hoping for from the United Nations and from International Red Cross have been unable to reach them. They're unable to reach them because they keep getting shot at and bombed because roads are impassable or blocked from bombs and explosive devices. Or the fact that people now have to have their shelter in the roadways. The people who are trying to shelter from the horror that has been inflicted upon them. So Christians in Maryland I think in overwhelming numbers, maybe we're too quiet, though, like it's been said before. Maybe we have not spoken out enough. Maybe even us who are leaders, clergy in the church, have have been too silent for too long. Our Holy Father hasn't been silent in this conflict. He has been, Pope Francis has consistently called for an immediate permanent ceasefire in Gaza for all people. The Gazans... The residents of Gaza need and have the right to be free from war, from destruction, and to be able to rebuild a a society and 